Good see you, I'm Hans, and in today's video we will go in depth into the Swiss weapon law. I was a bit confused myself when I made my first application. That's why I'm summarizing everything roughly here and all the applications shown here are linked in the video description, directly to FedPro. The various chapters are also highlighted in the video. So, a new firearm law has been in force in Switzerland since the August 15, 2019. It's based on the EU directives and in the past it was easy to explain how to obtain a weapon. There were two categories. In the meantime, the situation has become much more complicated and at least in the canton of Zurich, there are five categories. For the sake of the clarity, this video will focus exclusively on the acquisition of firearms. Attention, the forms and procedures shown apply to the canton of Zurich. Cantonal differences may occur. Some cantons may have their slightly modified versions of this video. If in doubt, I recommend calling the Cantonal Firearm Office in your place of residence and asking them in a friendly and honest manner what you want to know. My experience has always been very good and they are happy to help. In this booklet, Weapons in Brief from the Swiss Confederation, we can go through the different types of weapon. Under Swiss law, weapons are therefore firearms. The one thing with the overall length of less than centimeters, we will get into that. Compressed air and CO2 weapons, imitation weapon, alarm guns and software weapon, knives with automatic mechanism or one-handed, daggers, throwing knives, antique weapons, devices designed to injure people, stun guns, spray product containing irritants. No weapon are knives, two-handed folding knives, one-handed manually operated folding knives with an automatic mechanism, dagger with an asymmetrical blade, samurai sword, pepper spray, crossbows, arrow bow and the Swiss army pocket knife. Very briefly on dangerous objects, items such as hammers, axes, baseball bats, bicycle chains, skizzers or screwdrivers may not be carried or carried around unless it can be shown that they are being used or maintained for their intended purpose. When someone acquires a weapon, may it be by purchase, gift, inheritance, rent or loan, depending on the type of weapon, they need either a contract subject to registration a weapon acquisition certificate, weapon subject to auto authorization, or an exceptional authorization for prohibited weapons. The correct papers are therefore only required for the transfer or the acquisition. The general requirement for the acquisition of the weapon are always minimum age of 18 years, not under comprehensive supervision or represented by a pre cautionary person. There is no reason to believe that the person will harm himself or herself or others with the weapon. No record of violent or dangerous acts or repeated crimes or offenses in the criminal record. Foreign nations without a settlement permit require a firearm acquisition certificate for all weapons and their essential components. Nationals of certain countries are in principle not allowed to acquire weapon or components of weapons here in Switzerland. The current list as of summer 2023 consists of the countries Albania, Algeria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Kosovo, Northern Macedonia, Serbia, Sri Lanka and Turkey. There are three central requirements for inclusion in the so-called country list. First, there must be a large number of persons from the relevant war or conflict zones in Switzerland. Second, there must have been, or there is a high risk of ethnically or politically motivated conflicts in Switzerland between parties of the conflict from these areas. And third, weapons must have been brought illegally from Switzerland to one of these conflict areas. 
Let's move on to the first part. Weapons subject to registration. A written contract is required here. A model contract can be used by the FEDBOR. The Federal Office of Police FEDBOR is a federation authority of the Swiss Confederation with its headquarters in Bern. It reports to the Federation Department of Justice and Police. Weapons subject of declaration are single shots, rabbit killers, soft air weapon, alarm guns, alarm pistols, and intimidation weapons. Base paintball weapons, replica single shots, muzzle loader, compressed air and CO2 weapons, handheld repeater, or those sporting rifles, single shot and multi-barrel hunting rifles. Handheld repeaters for hunting as well as ordnance reply, repeating rifles such as the Carabine 1131 and the Long Rifle 11. The standard contract from the FEDPOL looks like this. The contract contains information about the person involved and the weapon. If the weapon is a firearm, the transferring person must send a copy of the contract to the canton, cantonal firearm office of the person acquiring the weapon within 30 days of signing the contract. Foreign nationals with other settlement permit require a fireman acquisition certificate for firearms subject to registration. The seller requires a copy of the valid passport or identity card and may ask for an extract from the Swiss criminal record. With this, we can now buy, for example, a K31. Now let's move on to the weapons that require a permit. This category includes, among others, personal ordnance weapons taken directly from the army, pistols with a maximum capacity of 20 cartridges, revolvers, lever actions, pump actions, foreign military, military repeating rifles, factory semi automatic with a maximum capacity of 10 cartridges. Self-loading shotguns, again, a maximum of 10 cartridge capacity. These require a weapon acquisition permit. To obtain one, an application must first be submitted to the Cantonal Firearm Office. Step 1. Submit the application for the Firearm Acquisition Certificate, together with a copy of an ID. A criminal Criminal record extract is no longer required as of January 2023. Step 2. If this is your first application, the police will invite you. They will explain the law briefly and ask questions concerning storage and the usage of the, of the firearm. No questions about sexuality, politics or private stuff will be asked, so don't worry about that. Step 3. The waiting time between the submission of the application and the weapon acquisition certificate is between four working days to four weeks, depending on how busy they are. Reasons for refusal are also provided by telephone and or in writing form. Between one and maximum three weapons can be acquired at once. The permit costs 50 Swiss francs that's roughly about 56.6 US dollar. With this, we can now buy a Glock 17 with a magazine capacity of maximum 20 rounds. Now it gets a little bit wordy, the banned weapons. This is where the booklet differs from the application. The booklet shows that prohibited weapons are semi-automatic handguns with more than 20 cartridges, semi-automatic long guns with more than 10 cartridges, automatic firearms, automatic firearms converted into semi-automatic weapons, semi-automatic handguns with folding or telescoping stocks whose overall length can be shortened to less than 60 centimeters, 3 to 24 inches, without losing of function, military launchers of explosive ammunition, light machine guns, laser and night vision devices, silencers and grenade launchers as an add-on to an firearm, electric shock devices that cause permanent damage to health, 
knives, these automatic firearms, butterfly knives, daggers, and throwing knives with a symmetrical blade. Weapons which simulate an object of use, for example, a firing pen, devices to design to injure people. Based on the official form, three different permits are required depending on the prohibited weapon. The exception permit small for sport shooters, the expansion permit small for collectors and a large permit. In this scenario, we will focus on the exception permit small. Sport shooters can purchase and use magazines of more than 10 rounds for long guns and more than 20 rounds for handguns with a sport permit. Automatic firearms converted to semi-automatic can also be purchased with, a, with this permit. Between one and maximum three weapon can be purchased with this permit. The fund costs 50 Swiss francs. That's just under 57 US dollar. The permit with the magazines applies to a weapon and not to a person. So if you buy a pistol with the normal permit and one with the exceptional permit, the large magazine must be stored separately from the first pistol and may not be used with it. Such a permit requires proof of regular sport shooting. This must be sent to the cantonal firearm office in the first to the fifth year and in the sixth to the tenth year after the date of issue of the permit. Important thing, this document must only be made for the first license. It's not necessary for further sporting licenses. Also, according to the official form, it does not seem to matter which weapon was used for shooting. We can buy a large magazine for our Glock now and go shooting with it. With the collector's permit. Collectors can also acquire former automatic firearms and acquire and use large magazines. The new addition is the possibility to acquire weapons that can be shortened below 60 centimeters or 23 to 24 inch without loss of function. In addition to the application for the cantonal exception permit, small a safety concept, the complete list of weapons in the collection and a proof of safe storage, if available, must be submitted. In my case, I send a five-page documentation. Between one and a maximum of three weapons can be purchased at once. Again, it is cost 50 Swiss francs, so just under 57 US dollar. Now we can put our Glock in this BNT USVG stock and go shooting with it. Other prohibited weapons, in example, automatic firearms, military launchers, machine guns, lasers, and night vision devices, silencers, grenade launchers, and dangerous electric shocks devices, they require a special permit. It is only granted very rarely and with restraint. As with other permits, an application must be made to the firearm office. The firearm offices have different procedures for the large permit, depending on the canton. In the canton of Zurich, the minimum requirement are that you have owned firearms for at least five years at, and that you are in possession of at least 12 firearms with a recognizable collection direction. In addition, the form is not publicly accessible, which is why I will not go into this topic in depth in this video. Ammunition, storage and transport. Regarding ammunition, the acquisition, possession or bringing into Swiss territory of the following types of ammunition is prohibited. Ammunition with armor piercing projectiles. Ammunition with projectiles containing an explosive or 
incendiary charge. Ammunition with one of or more projectiles designed to release substances that are permanently harmful to human health. Ammunition projectiles and missiles for military launchers with an explosive function. Ammunition with projectiles for the transmission of electric shocks. Ammunition for handguns with deformation effects or high penetration power. Weapons. Weapon components, ammunition and ammunition components must be stored carefully and protected from access by third parties. The bolt of automatic firearms and former automatic firearms must be stored separately from the weapon. A loss of the weapon must be reported to the police immediately. On one further addition, GP11 and GP90, in other words ammunition from the army that is handed out for example at the federal shooting, cannot be taken home. All other ammunition available on the free market can be acquired on a presentation of a current extract from a criminal record, maximum six months old, or a current weapon acquisition certificate, maximum 24 old months old. In the Canton of Zurich, if I'm not mistaken, a maximum of 300 kilograms of ammunition can be stored at home. More than that requires a permit from the police, fire police. A weapon carrying permit is required for carrying a weapon in places accessible to the public. Article 27 of the Weapons Act describes the legal situation. No permit is required for the transport of weapons to and from courses, exercises and events organized by shooting, hunting or airsoft clubs or by military associations or federations. To and from an armory, to and from a holder of a gun store license, to and from professional events when changing residence. Under no circumstances may you fill your magazine with ammunition even if it's not inserted in the weapon. However, an unloaded weapon with unloaded magazines can be transported together with ammunition. However, it is important to be aware that the gun laws may vary from canton to canton, even if the goal is uniformity. Always make sure to know the specific regulations for your canton and throughout inform yourself about the current laws and regulations before acquiring a weapon. I hope this video has helped to cast light on the complex process of acquiring weapons in Switzerland. Remember that this is a basic overview and not all details could be covered. If you have any further questions, I recommend that you contact your local authorities or legal experts. Thanks for watching and good choice.